Hi, this is Stephen Gray, and I'm telling my story, which is the mindset of a trailblazer. And I'm really excited to be able to share this part with you because this is where, you know, God looked at all the mess I created, all the stupid things I did, all the wrong directions I, I traveled, and I, I led, you know, my wife the wrong direction. And, you know, he humbled us. He humbled me personally and said, Stephen, you've got to become different. You've got to change. And so it was really encouraging because in 2010, that's when everything started to change. Around 2010, uh, the Lord began his plan. And a friend of Jamie, my wife, um, called her up and said, Stephen, I mean, Jamie, I think there's something about these Ten Commandments and these, this Sabbath day that you, we need, you need to look at because I think it's something we missed in our church. And I was like, well, what is the Sabbath day? I didn't even know what that meant at the time. didn't understand it. But she said, you need to take a look at this. And I said, okay, well, let's take a look at it. So what I did is I went to the Bible and I looked up every single scripture on the word Sabbath and the Ten Commandments. There was about 190 of them. I was blown away. I mean, I printed out this document. I read every single scripture from the beginning of the Bible all the way to the end. I realized that the seventh day is the day we're supposed to be honoring, not Sunday or Saturday. There was no Saturday or Sunday anywhere in the Bible. So I just said, well, how do you get to the seventh day? And God started revealing to us a little bit later. I'll, I'll share with you how we revealed where the seventh day is. But I knew it wasn't Saturday and I knew it wasn't Sunday because there's no such thing in the Bible. So I was like, wow, this is awesome. So he started showing me the commandments and why we need to start honoring them because it's a covenant between God and his people. He also showed us how the, the Ten Commandments is tied directly to the Mark of the Beast and how the Mark of the Beast is disobedience to the commandments. And I read that in Revelation uh, 14, Revelation 13 and 12. And it started talking about how people that are disobedient to the commandments, there's a challenge with that. I didn't understand how to explain it. All I knew was that I was excited about this new teaching that we had never been taught before. Because never in our church had we had ever learned anything about the commandments other than the principles about them. No one ever said learn the Ten Commandments. But the Bible says we need to put them on our hand and on our forehead, Deuteronomy 6. And we should be talking about them to our kids when we walk along the road all the time. So we were so fired up about that. So we started learning about this and we started teaching this. And we started realizing that based on Exodus 31, verse 12 through 18, that it talks about is something that we have to obey. It's forever. It's a forever covenant. And if you don't, you're going to die. And all these different things are said in the scriptures. And I was like, yeah, but that's the Old Testament, not New Testament. Until I read Hebrews 4, and I see that's in the New Testament. And I see that the commandments are all throughout the Bible. So God started sharing this information with me. And so I was just fired up. We didn't know what to do with it. So we just printed up all 150 scriptures, and we went to our Bible talk leader. His name is Steve. And I said, Steve, um, check this out. Can you tell me why we're not teaching this about these commandments? And he said, oh, those are nailed to a cross. We don't have to do that anymore. I said, well, I see it in the Bible. Can you show me a scripture on that? And, of course, there was no scripture to show that the Ten Commandments are nailed to a cross. I know the laws of Moses, all the food laws and all the sacrificial laws were, but the, the actual Ten Commandments are commandments. They're not suggestions, and they were by the Lord from the beginning. So I said, yeah, but can you show me a scripture that the Ten Commandments are nailed to a cross? And, of course, he couldn't. But he brought a leader over to the house, and his name was Kevin, and he came to the house, and he sat there, and he wanted to show me all the reasons why we don't have to obey the commandments. And he couldn't show me any scripture. It was just more of his theories and opinions that were taught in that church. And we started talking through it. And I was like, yeah, but I got 190 scriptures here that say from Genesis all the way to Revelation, we need to honor the seventh day and keep it holy. That we need to honor the Sabbath day and keep it holy by not working on that day. And then he showed me that we need to keep the commandments because it's a covenant between God and his people. And he started showing me all this stuff. Can you show me any scriptures in the Bible that we don't have to keep it? And he couldn't show me any, but he wanted me to not teach this information to anybody in the church. And I'm thinking... This is crazy. How do I go to church and not teach what the Bible teaches? Because the Bible says that I'm showing you scripture. I'm not giving you my opinion about the scripture. I'm just showing you the scripture. And you're telling me that I can't teach this information. That was tough for me. That was very difficult for me. And it was difficult for my wife as well because she was told the same thing that we can't teach what the Bible teaches. And so I said, okay, well, you know, you guys have a leadership group. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to print out these copies. I'm going to give it to the leadership group. There was 15 of them. I printed out 150 scriptures, gave it to all 15 of the leaders and went to the leadership board and said, can you guys read these scriptures and give me a reason why we're not teaching these Ten Commandments in the Sabbath day? And they all went away for a week, came back a week later, and I said, so did you guys read it and what did you guys come up with? They said, well, we didn't really read them and, you know, we kind of believe we're just going to follow what Kevin says. And I said, so you're following what Kevin says versus what the Bible says. I'm just not understanding that logic. We're supposed to be following the Lord, and the Lord is read in the scriptures. 
Why are we not following what that says versus what the man says? Oh, well, we trust him and whatever he says, that's what we're going to do. I said, okay. Okay, why? Well, well, I had a problem with that. So then what we did was they said, okay, well, there's an eldership of the church. So we're going to take it to the elders. We did the same thing, took it to the elders of this church. Now, this is a gigantic church. They're all around the world. They're in 100, 100, different, 100 different countries uh, around the world. So we took it to the leaders there and said, um, can you read these scriptures and tell us why we're not teaching this in the church? And they flat out said, oh, we don't want to talk about that. And they just ignored us completely. That was a hard time, you guys. That was our family. These are our brothers and sisters that were baptized disciples in Christ, and we loved them unconditionally, but we had a crossroad. Are we going to follow what man says, or are we going to follow what we read clearly in the Bible? Because to me, it made no difference of which commandment we follow. Because I asked him, I went to Kevin one day, after, after this was all said and done, after about three months. I went to Kevin, we met at a restaurant, and, and, and there was another brother there who um, now doesn't even follow Christ any longer, but we met at a, at, a Coke, at a Mimi's restaurant. I wrote out the Ten Commandments, I had a piece of paper, and it had a little line next to each commandment. I said, okay, you're saying these were all nailed to the cross, right? And Kevin said, yeah. I said, okay, well, why don't you tell me which one of these I can disobey today and still make it to the kingdom of God? So I turned the sheet around, and I said, okay, number one. It says, do not have any other gods before me. And I said, can I have other gods before me now? He says, no. I said, so they're still active today. He said, yeah. I said, okay. So that means that if I disobey them and don't repent, can I make it to the kingdom of God? He said, no. I said, so are they a sin? He said, yes. I said, okay, check mark. And I checked it. Number two, I do not have any idols. Can I have idols today? No. If you have idols and I don't repent from it, is it a sin? Yes, if I don't repent from that sin, can I make it to the kingdom of heaven now? He said, no. I said, okay, check mark. Number three, don't use the Lord's name in vain. Misuse the Lord's name in vain. Can I do that today? Can I curse in Jesus' name? and stuff? No. If I do, is it a sin? Yes. If I don't repent from that sin, can I make it to the kingdom of heaven today? No. And I checked mark. I skipped number four. I went down the list all the way to number 10. Every one of them, he said, they're still active today. They're still sins. And I will not make it to the kingdom of God. I said, okay, let's read the fourth one. It says, remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. On six days you work, and the seventh day is a rest for the Lord. On it, do not do any work. Not you, your children, your mad servant, your maid servant, not anyone in your house or in your town. Anyone who does this will be put to death. Remember the Sabbath day. And I said, do we have to keep that one? Well, you know, it was nailed to the cross. I said, no, 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 wait a minute. You can't just pluck one out the middle and say that one's nailed to the cross. Either they're all nailed to the cross or they're not. And he said, well, that's not what we teach. I said, I understand that's not what you teach. I got that. But that's not what the Bible says we need to keep it holy. And as a matter of fact, that Sabbath day is the longest one. And that's the only one that was created in Genesis 2 at the beginning of creation. So none of them are nailed to the cross. And he said, well, you know, I understand what you're saying and I appreciate that. But, you know, you cannot come to the church and teach that information. I said, so you're telling me that I can go to a congregation and church. I can worship and fellowship there. But I can't teach what the Bible says. Is that what you're telling me? And he said, yeah. And I said, okay, I got it. I said, well, let me just show you what the Bible's saying to you. And I turned the Bible around to Matthew 5, verse 17. And it said, um, do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I did not come to abolish them. I came to fulfill them. He said, unless, he said not until heaven and earth disappear will the least stroke or the, of a pen will disappear from the law until everything is created. So anyone who um, teaches the um, does not teach the commandments or, or disobeys the commandments and teaches others to do the same will be the least in the kingdom of heaven. And it said, and unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you'll never enter the kingdom of heaven. So I said, well, Kevin, that's you, because you're teaching me not to teach the commandments, and you're teaching others to do the same, so you'll be the least in the kingdom of heaven. And the Pharisees, at least, they honored the Sabbath day. So if you're not doing at least that, the Bible says you'll never enter the kingdom of heaven. So I said, so that's you. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and take my family, and we're going to go find a congregation of people that are going to obey the entire Bible, not just the parts that they are convenient for them. Gave him a big hug, said, I love you, bro. I'm here for you anytime. Um, said the same thing to the other brother, um, and I left. And I could say that was probably one of the most difficult things I ever had to do, because now I felt alone. I felt alone.
You know, now at this point, my wife didn't know I had this conversation. And my mom didn't know I had this conversation. And they were both in the church along with my kids. I didn't tell them to come. I just said, I'm leaving. And I and hopefully they were going to come with me. My wife had the same type of conversation. And she made the same decision. And so did my mom. And we left as a family. And we decided to go and find a church or a congregation of people that would honor the entire Bible. And that was probably one of the most difficult things because... For the next eight years, it was a very challenging situation. I'll tell you some stories on the next video of what, what happened and some of the, the funny stories of trying to find this. So when we left, we didn't know where to go. But we, this is what we did know. We were going to follow the Lord and what the Bible said, no matter what. I said, if nobody else is going to honor the Ten Commandments in this entire world, we're going to honor the Ten Commandments, and we're going to teach it to our children. We're going to teach it to every single person we could possibly think of. Anybody who's ever wants to know anything about the Bible, the Bible says, go make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and then of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, which is the Ten Commandments. I said, we're going to teach that to whoever's open to listen. And that's what happened. And that's kind of, you know, my story of, you know, what happened after we came back and God had us started a plan, and that was the beginning of the plan. That was the beginning of our journey. And on the next video, I'm going to share with you our journey, what happened from that point. Because from that point, it, it became kind of uh, crazy. <laughs> it became funny and, and interesting over the next eight years of my life and what God did. And I'm going to share with you um, some of those things. So make sure you subscribe below. And click the bell button so you can get a, a notification of all the videos that we uh, have so that you can be a part of this, this journey with me. Again, thank you so much for allowing me to share. I look forward to uh, talking to you soon. Have a great day.